I hope you guys are ready for an epic mountain siege as we are back once again with another Thrones of Britannia online battle. Today we are at one of the Scottish custom cities which looks goddamn glorious. I love all these mountain passes and positions inside the city that will hopefully just make this one hell of a siege battle. Today I am playing against Wild Bill, one of my good friends. He is a Twitch streamer. I'll make sure to link his channel down below in the description. He will be streaming plenty of Thrones of Britannia. Tanya, so you can go ahead and check that out. Let's stick the game on slow-mo whilst we just run through a few of the units and look at the map in a little bit more detail. But don't worry, we'll be getting straight into the battle as soon as we are done there. Some of my heavy infantry, I do have these Earls. These are my tier 2 swordsmen. Very, very deadly in close quarter combat and will definitely put a lot of HP damage on the enemy. And I'm playing Wessex, by the way, and my opponent is playing as Gwyneth. I believe they're called one of the Welsh factions who excel with using the long bow is very very deadly and hard to deal with and obviously this mountain fortress is just so right for that way of fighting then if we take a look at a few of my more other more interesting units, I do have some more of my heavy swordsmen right here. These are the tier 1 variants. Then as we make our way further back over onto this side, I have my royal hustles. These guys are going to be great at ripping apart my enemy's shield walls and doing plenty of damage. And then finally over here, I believe I have some of my mailed heavy infantry. These guys are the late period swordsmen who do have them kite shields, which are very, very deadly. And then finally just the marchers back there. Looking at some of the, uh, of the Welsh units, we do have some of these Welsh armoured swordsmen. These guys are tier 2, so kind of like the medium tier heavy infantry. Definitely will get some good damage done on the enemy. They also have this awesome position right here, some of the Welsh javelinmen whenever I try and push through this gate is going to be a hard fight indeed then over here we do have some of the Welsh longbows as well who are just so awesome like I love this the fact that there's just so many little positions in this city that they can use just to harass my soldiers so we have some of the longbows these guys are very very deadly and will do a lot of damage and then finally the last couple units we do have some more Welsh armoured axemen and also some more Welsh mailed axemen these guys are obviously their tier 3 their halved hitting infantry right here so let's just jump straight up onto normal speed i do also have my boats moving around here so we're going to get a cool little engagement pretty much throughout this fortress which should hopefully make it very exciting the city itself is very cool one of my favorite ones it, this is a scottish city i believe um so obviously it's why it's so mountainous the old scottish highlands uh, so we have this really cool position right here uh, which is you know covered by towers it's you can't put any siege towers up here and you also have this perfect overlook just to hammer the defenders as they come up then over on this right hand side you have a perfect position for your archers just to fire down on the enemy. You have this outer wall and then the outer wall does end up going into again another death trap where you can put your archers up here and again just fire down. I mean it just looks so good like... I feel like they've excelled in these custom maps. They really have. Then also to get up to the final stand, you have this huge hill there. And then finally over by the beach, you do have this undefended position right here. But again, it's kind of in a death trap once again where the archers can just volley down. So a very, very good defensive position. And here we go. The first little engagement popping off as my men do jump off of their boats and get ready to face some of the Welsh infantry. Luckily though, I have so many boats here. They am actually going round the side of the Welsh shield wall and hopefully that will aid me in this battle. We've also gone ahead and smashed down their gates immediately, but this is going to be a death trap right here. Trying to break through here, you guys are going to see the pain that we are going to about to receive. So burning oil to kick off and then the amount of javelins coming in over the Welsh shield wall is just brutal. I mean the Welsh shield wall is just holding, the javelins coming in, my men are getting slaughtered. But I wanted to kind of make this battle replay quite kind of cinematic. I didn't want to just not attack here um, because it was a death trap. So you're going to see, I'm going to try and just brute force my way forward in this position. I have probably my best infantry here as well, which might not be the smartest decision. Um, but as I said, I really want to just try and make this battle fun and interesting to watch. So I did decide to brute force. And also the attackers do get quite a lot more money as well. So because of that, it's, it's always much easier to kind of win as the attackers. Um, but again, just look at that. It just looks so great. I love the look of these battles, especially ones which are like this, where you have these overlooks and just men pushing everywhere. 
Obviously, more infantry being pushed up to a fight. And we are going to be hammering the fortress right now as the arrow fire comes flying in. Trying to break our way forward. Taking these walls early is really important. The quicker I take these walls, the quicker I can push up my more elite units. And you can also see I am starting to push up some of my heavy infantry as well. Whilst also leading some back in shield wall. I will obviously wait to push these guys up as more and more men do decide to descend upon the fortress. Again, taking a look over by the beach, you can see I have pretty much taken it by now. While Bill is retreating a large portion of his outer forces. Which is going to be a smart decision. Trying to get these guys back and reserved as much as possible. One of the things I really like what they seem to be doing in these custom matches. Because in Attila, I should say first. In Attila, the defenders always got 25% less money. But it was normally only ever like a square fortress. Which really didn't offer you that extra 25%. But with all of these custom cities and these custom defences, you know, especially this being kind of one of the, the most like defensible cities, it makes sense that the defenders have that, that lack of money to make it even because they have the goddamn mountains and they have the mountain passes. And this is so much more interesting mechanics and, and city positions which you, the defenders can take up to kind of really even out that defense and make it so interesting. You know, there's so many points of attack and there's so many, you know, choke points and ways that the defenders can hold off if they want to and use the walls to their advantage. This makes me really, really excited for Three Kingdoms when it does come out. Um, obviously being another historical total war as they do retreat back their lines. However... I'm going to be in hot pursuit, don't you worry. The walls are still being fought over, but I am taking this uh, gatehouse now. Now the gatehouse is down, I can kind of push through with the rest of my men. And obviously my general right here as well. Alfred the Great cheering the men forward. Uh, which is pretty epic because more, more and more of my men do seem to be getting off the siege towers. And I have noticed that it does feel like that bug where the soldiers wouldn't go up the siege tower has actually now been fixed. Which is a, like news to my ears. Um, there's one of the most frustrating bugs which was still in by, by Attila, but it seems like it has been kind of sorted out now, which I hope is definitely the case. Again, if we make our way back over to the main gate, we can see my push is still relentless. However, just look at the amount of bodies piling up right now as I just try and brute force my way through this gate. Honestly, if I was playing a little bit more strategically, I definitely would have just given up on this assault position. Waited for Wild Bill to have to bring back his forces to defend other positions and then make my way forward. At the moment, this is just a slaughter. But because this is more of a fun cinematic replay, we're just going to be charging in everything we have and trying to break through this position i mean many men will die because of my foolishness but hey as long as it looks cool for the replay that's the main thing again if we make our way back over to this side the beachhead side we can see my tier 2 infantry trying to break through the welsh shield wall there's even another one back there as well looking very glorious waiting for their opportunity to take me on we also have a line of archers up here as well they have a pretty good angle down onto the position right here and again i really do enjoy these ways the defenses are set up in this custom map this is a true scottish fortress that is for sure now moving over to the right hand side you can see that my forces have managed to make their way around this path and actually trying to look to outflank the position of wild bill however this entire time i am being hammered by his archers up here who actually have a pretty gnarly position overlooking this entire gorge area being able to rain down fire on my soldiers but I am now pushing up more and more reinforcements I have my tier twos making their way up and also plenty more reinforcements which are going to be pushing into the city now I have my higher tier threes as well as my royal huskals as well the tier three axe infantry the ones I need up here just to take a part his shield wall and especially now I'm pushing on every single flank over on this right hand side I'm hoping we'll be able to smash our way forward and then obviously get onto this position right there because if I can't break through these side positions I'm just going to get cut to pieces because as you guys can see this battle still isn't going in my favor I'm trying at this point just to simply take the gatehouse with sheer weight of numbers which is kind of going in my favor slowly now you can see at this point I'm just like fuck it we need to take this everyone forward I even tried to start burning down this watchtower as well but it was just taking far too long and that's when I decided just to literally push up all my infantry get in here and try and take that out I mean it's a little bit too late honestly because I'm about to run out of infantry here anyway but if we can take this at least it would help us out a little bit also plenty of fire arrows as well coming in here burning these javelins and rinsing out the infantry 
the main fight is over here as well still. We're, as you can see, we're still fighting, trying to break forward that shield wall. But the main engagement will be over here at this current time. Um, as we're actually still fighting for the walls themselves as well. There's a small resistance here of Welsh warriors fighting bravely, but my men are pouring off of the siege towers now like a constant stream ready for battle you see my infantry as well my general is still back here waiting for his time to come up i think the gates have been taken as well so really it's just me pushing up my soldiers now something what i should have done honestly looking back at this battle um was not commit as much soldiers here because you know after i've defeated this which is going to happen and you can see is actually slowly happening right now once I beat back the Welsh forces here, I'm just going to be put into a, a pretty nasty choke point. You can see Wild Bill knows exactly that, and he's bringing back some of his armoured axemen as we speak. What I should have done is I should have spent, sent more forces round here, as I have now just taken the tower here. So now would have been the perfect time to have the hostiles turn up when there's no javelins left, there's no archers left. I could have simply have just poured my forces into the fortress and overwhelm this position which women would in turn have allowed me to overwhelm the side positions and really help me out in this battle it was just a shame i kind of committed a lot of soldiers over to this right hand side and then was like ah i can't really be bothered to send them all the way back because it's just gonna take too long but in hindsight i definitely honestly should it would have helped keep wild bill as stretched as possible it would have helped me have been able to push my soldiers forward but to be fair as well it's not it's not like a hundred percent sure that we're going to lose um, that battle over the gatehouse. We still have our tier 3 heavy infantry. You know, some of the best swords in the game are over there right now. So it's not like we're just simply going to lose because we're outnumbered. You never know. The last of my swords here surrounding his Welsh axemen. As you can see them in green. Trying their best to beat me off. And I'm going to try and you know, make my way over to the next assault point. I want to start working on these positions as soon as possible. Something I've noticed in Thrones of Britannia as well. Is it does seem like the enemy does not always route like straight away which is good um you know you have these positions where the, the unit is literally surrounded right here they, they form a nice little shield wall and they try and fight their way out and it's really cool to see that because i feel like we kind of lost that in roman Attila. um and it's good to see that once again coming back um to thrones so again we finally managed to cut our way forward that battle line i'm going to be pushing up some fresher units now trying just to break through this position here but it's going to be a very, very hard fight. Again, that shield wall just offering so much protection to the unit that it's, it's almost impossible to break through that in a quick manner. Over here, but I believe I have my, uh, my hostiles. No, I don't actually. I just have my uh, tier, a higher tier infantry. But I do believe I am starting to move up my heavy axes. And that's exactly what we're going to be using to try and cut through this Welsh male swordsman. Um, however, yo, this is a tier 3 swordsman unit for the Welsh covered in you know pretty elite armor heavy sword heavy shield and obviously when they form their shield castle it's going to be very hard to break it over here though my men are still trying to break over the walls we have actually thinned out the garrison as well bill has to bring back more and more soldiers to fortify his inner position this is getting weaker and weaker and i believe i do make the decision yeah here we go i do make the decision to actually bring some soldiers off from this uh, position of the, from this wall and bring them all the way around to be moved up into this gate and I, I honestly should have done this much much sooner even if i was just hiding it around the corner now would have been the perfect time to bring them in and reinforce and because it's a little bit delayed i'm gonna lose a lot more men trying just to simply push up here because at the moment we are in two heavy choke points and it's not like me um it's not like me actually having you know all the soldiers i have over here are doing anything because i can only really commit these guys one at a time you know the welsh are holding a proper 300 spartan moment right now because I just have so many men here just waiting for their time. Now, obviously, I'm going to be pushing up the hostiles into the engagement. But all these other units who are just waiting, biding their time, are just aren't really doing much. Now, granted, a lot of these guys are going to be getting their energy back after a hard, hard fight. And we finally managed to kill this unit of Welsh soldiers right here who uh, were plaguing me. I believe I do end up sending... Yeah, there you go. The, the gates are opening. I do send back more infantry over there as well. I believe I send three or four units. Maybe all of these wounded units as well do end up going over there. But as we look down on the Welsh formation right now, 
we can see that they are just doing their job. They're down. They've lost about, you know, what we can see, they've lost almost 40 men right now in the space of five minutes. It's a hard fight, and my Huskles are finally starting to get forward. You can see a few of them making their way to the front line, and they'll be good at hacking away this armor. If we take a look at their stats, actually, can we see? Uh, no, for, oh, it's really annoying when it does this. They have really good melee uh, damage, and that's kind of what does the killing blow, whereas melee skills have a chance to hit, if I'm not mistaken. So this fight hopefully will turn over to my favourite. It's just whether or not I can do it fast enough. Over here as well, you can see that my men are actually getting beaten back somewhat. Some of my more elite units who are exhausted, who have been fighting since the beginning of the battle, that initial beach landing, you know, they're doing their job. They've managed to break through these Welsh positions, but I'm losing a lot of men as we do it. This Scottish fortress is truly showing its merit right now. As the Welsh literally give up no quarter. And I think honestly, as more and more soldiers do fall back from here, this is going to be my position to strike. Because what there's only some Welsh javelins here, some Welsh armored swordsmen, nothing too crazy. And as soon as these, these royal axemen get over here, you know, tier three infantry, granted they're gonna be exhausted. But the units you gotta remember that they're gonna be fighting against are also gonna be exhausted because they've been fighting. So because of that, you know, this infantry, even tired, will do a lot of damage and hopefully break forward. And as you can see, I'm starting to send the last load of reinforcements. And again, this was probably my biggest mistake in this battle, was not sending these guys faster or even just committing them to this point in the first place. I thought I'd maybe have had a harder job uh, at the beginning. Right here, I'm trying to actually just break forward that initial plaza with the arrow support. Luckily, though, there's no way to replenish ammunition, which I think is a real shame. I feel like archers should get the opportunity to replenish their ammunition because you can do it in, uh, in sea battles and naval battles. So, why can't you do it in a siege battle when you're defending? Surely you'd have extra arrows. I understand that maybe for balancing purposes, but maybe just having a point on the map, like a capture point, where they have to run back and go, and for a minute or something, they have to stand in the capture point to get their ammunition back. I think that'd be much, much more enjoyable and make archers much more valuable in sieges than they are, because they do tend to run out of ammunition fairly quickly. And here we go. I think I've broken through. Yes, I have indeed. I've actually managed to secure this mountain path. Now I just need to rush my infantry forward as soon as I realize that I've broken forward. Obviously, there we go. Exactly right there. I have seen it. And I mean, the amount of dead soldiers right here is disgusting. My infantry are going to be running forward. And these guys are fresh. These guys haven't swung their sword since the beach landing again, which was just really awesome. There's even some boats here as well. Like, one of the things I really love about Friends of Britannia, there seems to be a lot of stage battles in the sense of there's like multiple positions you can defend and because of that you have multiple defenses. Like if you look at this map, we had the beach, we had the side passage by the beach, we had this gate right here, we had this gate over here, we had this mountain pass, we had this open field right there. And then inevitably we're going to have a huge fight right here when our soldiers do break forward, which was something I thought was just really, really cool. So right here, I'm, I'm throwing in my exhausted units just to try and hold his Welsh mailed axemen in place so that I can get around the flank and keep this gap open. The worst thing that could possibly happen to me right now is if Wild Bill can form a shield wall here and close me off in once again another choke point. I honestly need to try and stretch his line as much as possible so when the big boys do turn up, which they are coming, four heavy units of tier, uh, tier one infantry? Tier 1 infantry, but they're the elite swords. So they'll definitely be good. I mean, looking at their stats, 50, 50, 50, 43 is very nice comparing it to, like, the Axemen. Yeah, you know, they're the same quality of these guys. So once they break their way forward, it's going to be great. And as you can see, I'm trying to do that by opening up this point right now. I'm charging in this unit right there, even though they're exhausted. They're keeping this channel open so I can pour soldiers through this gap around the side and maybe even coming in the flank here, which is very, very juicy for me. Over here as well, we can see that my, my archers who are out of ammunition have run out. However, I have pushed forward a unit of Royal Huskles, which are just slowly making their way in and then should cut down these Welsh javelin men very soon. Which then will allow me just to kind of completely take this. You can see while Bill noted that it was more important he defend this position. So he did retreat back some of his kind of tired infantry. Which have been fighting since the beginning of the uh, battle itself. But I thought this was cool nonetheless. You know, 
that I'm having to force him back. But this is perfect for me right now. I honestly just need to throw through everything I've got over on the right hand side as well. I mean, just look how many men I have here just waiting. My elite axemen, my elite swordsmen are still just being tied down. It's not like I'm losing a lot of men here. It's just causing you know, me to be delayed more than anything else. One unit of infantry holding back five, six, seven infantrymen, which honestly could have been doing so much more work if I had them better placed. While Bill is slowly starting to deploy more and more soldiers here, but I'm just glad that I can get this infantry forward and through these gaps. I'm also trying to help support here by outflanking the Axemen as more and more soldiers do push forward. I don't think I have a lot of units with the Raider trait either. I have a couple, but not too many. Oh, and while Bill throwing in his general unit actually right now into the sides of my swordsman, which is going to be effective, sending quite a few of them to the ground. Once if they get bugged down, that would also be very good. Wait, is this javelin cavalry? Is this javelin cavalry? No, it's melee cavalry. They're just holding their spears weirdly. Or do they have ammunition? If they do have ammunition, yeah, they are jav cav. Very interesting. So his cavalry is going to be doing a beautiful downward hill charge, ripping through my battle line, actually. Killing a whole bunch of my infantry. Um, hopefully we can maybe take out a few of them as he does try to pull out. But he's bringing down more spearmen. His infantry are being dispatched from the hill. Looking not to give up this position without a fight. And that's a very smart way to think of it. Because if he uses all of his numbers right now. If he brings down the rest of his infantry. The rest of his javelins. Then he can go ahead and, and really encircle my force. And again. Battlefield looking very very awesome. Here we go, more and more infantry being pulled out to the cause, pulled out to fight here. I've got more infantry myself being brought up. These guys are again tired. But they are ready for battle as they charge in, put down their shields. Another clashing of swords, shield wall smashing. While Bill is shitly just using his numbers, he is advantaging. Even though I've managed to smash through this initial wall right here, there's still plenty more to hold me back another two units here. My best bet in this battle, one, the fact that I outnumber him by a thousand men still, is just to simply go ahead and try and use, um, just to try and keep his forces here as busy as possible until this, you know, this portion of my forces can come in. Because, I mean, to be fair as well, it's not like my numbers are really counting for much because they're poured into that alleyway right now, allowing Wild Bill to use his superior numbers in this select uh, position to surround my forces. You can see them doing exactly that, completely surrounding this unit of Royal Infantry. And because they're so tired, you know, they're going to be routed quickly and killed quickly. Coming up against fresh units. The same over here as well. His Welsh mailed swordsman. You know, the tier threes are doing really good. I have managed to go ahead and get a nice little reverse though, surrounding one of his tier two heavy infantry. To be fair though, these guys are exhausted and already quite depleted, so it's not really the best, you know, surround in the world, but I'll take it. The fact that we can take these guys out of commission fairly quickly as well will allow me just to send more men over to the main fight, which is still going on. Even some of my archers having to be pushed into battle right now. Any damage I can commit to his forces is very, very important. I do have a nice unit of some Huskles and some tier 3 infantry as well. So but it's just the fact that these guys are so tired, which is my biggest problem. Whereas his men are fresh and he can use that to his advantage. I mean, I have a lot of fresh units over here, but because they're just over here, they're not really doing much. You know, look how much infantry I have just pouring full through this breach. There's so much just waiting to come in. So ideally, I need to try and break this as soon as possible. I've managed to chase this unit back, and now it's just killing this one unit of tier 3 swordsmen, which don't look like they are in shield walls. So because of that, I can maybe break that. While Bill is going to be counter-charging, but that does leave gaps on the side, and more and more infantry are coming round. So if I can kind of rotate my forces like I'm doing here, I can maybe encourage a few gaps to appear, which would be very, very nice. Wild Bill is doing an amazing job here, though, using his numbers to his advantage, surrounding my tired and exhausted infantry. Because if he can kill this position right here, if he can wipe out my forces in the central, central courtyard, he can then commit everything he has over to that one breach, and it will just be a, a mega grind fest. And this battle does quite remind me of the old school like Medieval 2 battles, you know. Lots of cool choke points, lots of positions for defenders to hold. 
and it's been it is more for the defenders about delaying the attackers so they can overwhelm one portion of the forces rather than having this huge pitch battle inside a city my axman my axman should be having a field day against these spearmen but it's the fact that they are also being hit right here which isn't great as the welsh continue to put on the pressure I believe that more of my reinforcements have now turned up, which is nice. Yeah, these guys have turned up to try and relieve some of the pressure. My Huskers are actually quite close to routing. That is nowhere near good. Well, Bill is, yeah, there you go. My Huskers are routed. That is huge for me. Look at this. My infantry finally going up. I managed to get them into marching column. I'm just going to try and brute force my way through here. While Bill not going to allow this to happen. But at least now, over on this, hand, this right hand side. I have a lot of my fresh units now. If we take a look at it, yeah, these guys are all fresh. So I can really just pile in here. And I'm trying to use my weight of numbers here just to slide through. I'm going to lose a lot of men here. You can see a lot of men getting cut down as they try and run through the ranks. But while Bill, at least at this position, doesn't have a dense enough formation to stop me from doing this. So I'm going to be using that to my advantage, breaking apart his you know, thin line. And this is mainly here just to punish the fact that he doesn't have enough men deployed there. You know, I'd never be able just to run through this. I'd get cut to pieces. Because there's just, you know, a couple soldiers here, I can use that to my advantage. And I can actually start to open up a bit of a breach here. And as soon as that breach is opened up, you're going to see all of my forces running forward here, trying to break forward. Uh, Bounce of Power has been very much evened up as well, with Wild Bill doing his amazing surrounds. He's managed to cut down the deficit to eight to 400 men even from 1,000. That is not bad. Not bad at all. In the space of, what, a couple minutes, he's managed to kill 600 of my men without losing anyone. I mean, obviously, he's lost people, but you guys know what I mean. And he's sending in more and more infantry here to hit me in the flanks. Very smart move here. And this is, there is, yeah, this is Welsh infantry. Again, hitting me in the flanks, doing extra damage, taking away my shield defense, hurting my morale. Even over here as well, we are completely surrounded. I just didn't have the numbers here. Whereas Wild Bill could push his entire force in and just start cutting me down. Again, almost down to 300 men difference now. So I think one of the only ways I'm going to win this battle is if I can open up this breach point. Because soon enough, this is going to be lost right here in the courtyard. And once that's lost, Wild Bill is going to push everything in. Luckily, though, I did manage to make a huge break right here against this unit of infantry, allowing a perfect stream for my infantry just to pour through here and open up the border once again. I mean, if it wasn't for that break, I don't know what would have happened. You can see my infantry all being committed now. I have plenty more to be chucked into battle. And thank God for this. And this is going to allow me to surround this as well. Because I know these, these are like a lot of archer soldiers right now. Uh, which don't have any ammunition left. You know, a lot of the longbows are being forced to fight in this battle. Just to simply try and hold me in place. So I, what I went ahead and did is I loaded a unit of Huskles here. Just to make sure that Wild Bill can close this off. I'm also really, really lucky over on this left hand side. These Royal Infantry didn't break. If these guys were to break or if these guys were to break. That would free up so much of his infantry he could then just send round. But I, I'm, I'm really lucky that these guys held for as long as they did. And again, that's one of the things in Thrones I, I do dig. The units will just insta-route as soon as they're surrounded. It's allowing me to pour in the rest of my infantry here just to go ahead and keep this up. And I can now finally use my numbers to my advantage. There's no way for Wild Bill to close off this gap right here. And that's going to help me just to start cutting down his men. You can see I've managed to push the number advantage back into my favor quite handsomely. My Huskles, even though they are tired, can, you know, with the support of more heavy infantry, break through this unit of spears. And the balance of power is finally shifting back in my favor. Well, Bill is going to be committing more of his men here, getting a beautiful charge off here. Oh no, I finally realized... However, I'm in a very dense formation. That's going to allow Wild Bill to get this nice surround on. But it's also going to allow me to now come in as well. As the fighting in the streets is brutal, man. So many carts and liveliness. Like, I, re I just love the siege maps in Thrones of Britannia. I really do. I think they are one of the best parts of the, of the game, for sure. In my opinion. Like, for online, 100% these siege maps are awesome. Just really well designed, interesting. And um, I think there's like 16 or, or 19 unique ones as well. So there's plenty to keep you busy. Because there's, there's, I think there's like 10 city ones. And then there's like 6 or 7 port defences as well. My mailed swords are finally being able to do what they do best. 
But again, I've been surrounded here. While Bill is using these flanks very effectively. Thankfully, though, I've just got the sheer number advantage. Killing his archers has helped me out. And being able to use my soldiers effectively is great. I've managed to break through on this position, killing the spears, allowing these mailed swords to get through with their late, late game kite shields. And you can see in the distance as well, more and more infantry pouring through. With my general even getting involved here as well, which is great to see my general leading the men forward. And that's cleared up this entire position now, allowing me just to literally use my entire force. Now, granted, over here, Wild Bill is actually trying an amazing job to uh, beating me back. Like, I'm not going to lie. He surrounded my units very effectively here. But I just think my weight of numbers is going to be too much for him. The Huskull's coming down. And this is, I believe, a depleted unit, which is already shaken. So the Heavy Axe Infantry should be able to dismantle this shield wall without too many problems. The rest of the infantry going ground, but... I mean, I want to quickly go on slow-mo really quickly uh, before the battle does end to just show you guys the sheer engagement. Maybe I should have waited a little bit to do this, but we'll just do it now quickly on slow-mo. So we have the beach battle right there. Then we had all the battles in the, uh, the mountain pass. So many bodies there. Then we have this battle right here, which led off pretty intensely. We go back over there. You know, I mean, look at this battle at the gate. That was one hell of an engagement, honestly. Then we have the engagements over here as well. On the walls, we have the engagement over by this small village. Then we have the battles through this little mountain pass as well. One, two, and then this huge one. And then we finally have this one in the center. Like, it's just so much fun. Um, and obviously a massive thank you to Wild Bill because, you know, a lot of the times people, when I play them, if they're just randomers, they'll go super try hard and they'll do cheesy tactics and stuff. But, you know, as Wild Bill is a follow content creator, he knows that I'm trying to get a cool looking battle more than a, a more of a micromanagement engagement. So because of that, you know, he will set up his forces in a cinematic way. He won't just commit because the smartest thing would have been just to commit like his entire army in the mountain passes and also over here. And it'd be impossible for me to break forward pretty much in shield wall. Like it literally would be impossible unless I had like catapults or something. The last Welsh resistance, but I mean, my men are just far too superior now. His general is down to 11 men. He'll be dying soon. And that's going to be Walshi Road for the Welsh. By the looks of it, bounce power heavily in my favour now. I mean, this was definitely a costly victory, though. There you go, the Welsh general right there. The Welsh king is fighting with his sword and shield right there. We can see him. And he has been slain, smashed off his horse. His men will fight over his body to the last, but... It will only be a matter of time until his entire army and city is ablaze and looted, pillaged, and taken. More reinforcements pushing around the flank. I want to envelop his position as quickly as I can, setting some units off here, as well as the axes in the rear against spearmen. Oh, they are going to get so many kills here. I'm going to get a good view without the trees in the way. More sword infantry turning up as well. I even have a unit back here capturing this uh, point right there to try and lower their morale. Yeah, if we take a look at that, we can see that, you know, it's just a matter of time. But he definitely made me bleed for this victory. That is 100% sure. And there's also a small unit infantry over there, actually. Yeah, it's just going to be the last pockets of resistance. And I'll just leave the camera here and we can watch the, the final stand of the Welsh bravely standing at this amazing mountain fortress. Yeah, men are routing now. They're giving up. There is nowhere left for them to run. The city has been taken. Wessex has held firm in this battle. I definitely think Wessex is my favourite faction as well in the uh, in the game so far. That and the Normans. The Normans have a really, really cool roster. Oh, some brutal kills as well to end this battle. Take a look here, we can see the last of his men are routing is this last unit of Welsh mailed swordsmen. They've actually got 260 kills before they did rout, but there we have it. Battle is over, Pyrrhic victory. You are victorious, but at what cost? Many have paid the ultimate price. They have the iron price, but what is dead 
may never die. That is true indeed. So we're going to look at the kills for my infantry of Wessex. We can see my general getting almost 200 kills. A lot of my infantry actually getting 200 kills. And this one being my true MVP, or both of these guys being my MVP with over 300 kills. Very nice. My Axe infantry as well getting 250 kills. Unfortunately, though, a lot of this infantry, was it? No, this one was it? A lot of one of my infantry's... Oh, it would be these guys, yeah. These guys didn't do great because I just throwed them through that choke point and got, I got torn to pieces by the burning oil and the javelins. Taking a look at Wild Bill. Yeah, this unit, 300 kills. This one over here, 207. Uh, and his archers and longbows and javelins doing very admirably as well. I think this one being his MVP, though, 350 kills. Very nice indeed. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. Let me know if you want to see more of these awesome, awesome custom uh, siege maps for Thrones of Britannia. Also, go ahead and check out Wild Bill. I'll make sure to link his channel in the comments or the description. And I will see you guys in the next one.